what's going on guys this is Joey I'm coming at you another video today today I'm gonna to give you guys an update on this week's progress so you can see here I kind of just moved downstairs to where actually my fish tanks are and kind of just I think it's just a better background uh, for you guys to just kind of watch while I'm talking I haven't done my weekly maintenance yet uh, so these tanks are a little bit dirty still like they have algae in both sides here uh, but it is what it is alright so let's get started on the previous video I updated you guys on the fish room and how that was going. Currently, they're both still under cycling phase, but uh, this week I did make some additional progress in the actual system. So starting off with the blue rack, the blue rack, uh, I added the pods in last week. So in this week, I started adding in the plants for the tank. So in one of the tanks, I wanted to keep all of the blade grass, uh, macroalgae in that tank specifically. And I actually ended up moving some of the dry rocks that I had in one of the tanks, the bare bottom tank, and kind of just arranged them on the corner of the edges of the tank because, like I said, the light kind of cuts off at the edge because I only had one LED to kind of light a four foot tank. And it's possible, but because it's sitting on one of those um, OEM just kind of like light stand, it's kind of low to the actual tank. So it won't be able to actually light the whole tank. So what I did was I kind of scaped around that and I actually scaped the side of the tanks. And for the most part, one, I kind of needed rocks in there for live rock and it'll help with the uh, bacterial growth and a healthy reef anyways. And two, it gives a spot for uh, the fish to hide in once I actually add in the fish. As I was rearranging uh, the rocks, I noticed that I quickly like ran out of rocks. Even though I bought 50 pounds of rocks, you know, it's really not enough rocks. So I went ahead and ordered another 50 pounds of rocks and it got in today and I just kind of tossed it in, in the same area to kind of like let it cure and cycle. So it's gonna be a lot of ammonia in that system right now. But um, I wanted to have enough rocks so I can kind of stack them the way I like them. So I also want to use the leftover rocks to rescape the 33 planet reef tank that I'm eventually going to do. But um, whatever's left over, I'm going to go ahead and use that to rescape it possibly. In addition to the system, I hooked up the auto top off and basically it just pulls the water from the 40 gallon breeder that I bought from Petco on the dollar gallon sale. And it basically dumps it into the sump when the water level gets low. Um, in about a week, it only dropped about maybe not even a half an inch or so in the sump, so it's pretty good. And also I added my um, small protein skimmer that I had for one of the tanks that I wasn't using into the system so I can pull all of the organics and all the bad um, debris and junk that was in the system uh, from dry rocks being cured in there and also all of the sand and whatnot just being kicked up. And for the most part, it's actually picking up a lot and skimming a lot of, you know, organics in the actual reef right now and I'm having to clean it maybe every couple days just because the protein skimmer is like designed for nano tanks and just smaller systems and this is like a huge system so it's pulling a lot of it out but eventually it's going to kind of like settle and actually not pull anything out and then eventually I'm going to pull out the protein skimmer because I'm going to let the macroalgae do the work. Finally the last addition I did to the blue rack this week was add in some Seachem Matrix. So I was waiting for some basically mesh to come in so I can just kind of dump the, the actual pond matrix into that and just kind of drop it into the sump. But the mesh was kind of just back order. So all I did was I just grabbed a tray and actually dumped the pond matrix into that and just dumped it to the sump. But what happened was a lot of the pond matrix likes to float and a lot of that float and eventually it will sink. But I have to wait now for it to sink and I'll kind of throw it back into the basket. So when the mesh comes, I'll probably dump the pond matrix back into the mesh, but right now I'll just use a tray instead. And let's move on to the green rack. So the green rack right now, it's cycling. I haven't really done much. I added pond matrix similar to the blue. So when I first designed the actual racks, I mirrored everything. So everything was kind of like really the same setups. And I forgot that the green rack needed a CO2 um, inlet or some inline method of pumping the CO2 in. Initially, I was going to do a diffuser, but I was like, wait, you know, this is a huge 200 gallon tank. It's going to, you know, be a waste of CO2 if I use a diffuser. It has to be some sort of inline diffuser or some sort of reactor. Um, I made a reactor a long time ago on my 125 gallon when I used to have it. You know, for the, for the most part, it worked really well, but I didn't really like the design because I had to use another um, filter to do it. I could have totally used the sump filter pump to do it because that pump is super strong. But the problem was um, I was using one inch hose on that and then you know downsizing all of that I had to have a bunch of adapters and um, 
I didn't really think that it was worth the money to buy a bunch of these adapters and connect them and then make the reactor, you know, and whatnot. So I went the easy route and the cheap route. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pump the CO2 in line into the return of the actual tank and hopefully that diffuses enough and you know the length of it is maybe only a couple feet and it will dump right into the water and hopefully that will diffuse it fast enough and good enough and you know it'll work maybe we'll see I've um, I've tried this in the past before uh, some version of some form of it and it works for the most part um, so I'm gonna see how it works in the bigger system and if it doesn't work you know I'll probably modify it or do some other thing so what, the one thing I need to do is I need to tear down the CO2 system in the discus tank because I actually wanted to convert that tank into a low-tech tank to see if the fries uh, would last a little bit longer. But now I'm noticing the parents are eating the eggs before they can actually even hatch. So I think they're just like egg eaters instead and they're not even letting the fries have a chance. So I might have to go back to actually blocking it with some sort of guard or some sort of um, cage so that they actually can hatch all the way and we'll see what happens from there. But I need to move the CO2 tank from this system outside into the racks and then I'm going to set it up and hopefully that will work. So moving on to the exciting part of today. Today I got a bunch of shipments in um, for the rack setup outside. Again, the rack's not set up so I set up the quarantine tanks on the racks on the back there. So I have one 10 gallon tank that I drilled correctly. <laughs> The other four tanks broke, like I mentioned, and that's all gone. I went to Petco uh, this week and they didn't have any more 10 gallons because I bought them all and I broke them all. <laughs> so I went and bought a 20 gallon long instead and it worked out really well because I'm using 20 gallon long for the saltwater um, fish and I'm using 10 gallons for the freshwater fish because I actually can use a lot of these other tanks I have in here. Um, I can isolate them for fresh water and actually quarantine them in there. So really I don't need a big tank uh, for the fresh water, it's really the salt water because if I get in a bunch of them, I need enough space to actually quarantine them and you know make sure they eat and just you know make sure they don't have any diseases and whatnot. And those tanks outside should be good enough for the uh, salt water fish. So I got my livestock from a few different uh, sources. The freshwater fish I got from Wet Spot Tropicals, they normally carry a lot of exotic and a lot of um, fish that I like. Um, but for the most part, I got uh, a couple rainbows, uh, a couple sore tails, and um, some bumblebee autos again. I want to try those again because I did, wasn't successful last time, and uh, some plecos. And for the salt water, I kind of want to keep it a surprise, but um, I got some really nice fish that uh, I will show you guys uh, eventually. I got a shrimp and a crab to help take care of some algae issues I had. And for the corals, I bought. A bunch of zoas and um, some SPS corals because I'm trying to experiment with SPS again and um, there was a few other mushrooms and and whatnot but for the most part I don't like to show my fish that I recently got or whatnot until they go to quarantine phase just because you don't know what's gonna happen and like a great example is today you know I got in my saltwater fish you know I bought five of them and you know a couple hours so maybe three or four hours later they were in the quarantine tank and one of them died just just like that so if I showed you guys, you know, like, you know, oh great, I got a bunch of these fish on um, this update and the next update, they all die. It's just like, what's the point, right? Um, so hopefully they make it through quarantine and, you know, I'm going to probably get a refund credit because literally it just died like within a couple hours. <laughs> so what I'm going to show you guys are some of the corals I got. Um, the corals are all here, you know, they just barely acclimated to the tank. So this is the first time they're actually seeing light. Some of them are opening up already, which is a good sign. And um, some of them are probably going to stay closed for a couple of days, which is fine. The light intensity is relatively lower or in the lower side, so the zoas and whatnot should be okay. Um, I don't have to, you know, I guess turn it down or you know, put it into acclimating phase. But while we're on this tank, uh, I did get some new uh, lights. So a few months ago, I was testing the uh, Radeon XR30 in this tank, which is great, but I think it's overkill for the tank. So. Um, I really love the results in terms of the growth of the plants in the tank. So I went ahead and got the XR15 for these tanks. And the XR15 is really, you know, perfect for this tank. The only thing is the covers I have on there, there's a center like brace in the middle that kind of blocks all of the highlights so it doesn't really spread evenly or it doesn't really spread nicely. So I'm going to probably uh, change up the actual 
uh, cover or top to something a little bit more clear and solid straight or just open it and just do a complete like you know open top like this but I'm afraid that the uh, fish can possibly jump out because you know any fish can jump out and it's just like if you have it open you have a potential of having it jumped out so I could maybe get some sort of like net or something like that and keep it in there but um, we'll see what happens all right, so that's a quick update on this week's progress. You know, the racks outside are actually continuing to cycle a couple more weeks and they'll be fully cycled. I'm actually doing a completely brand new cycle and not like, you know, using media from any of these tanks. Because one, I don't want to contaminate it and two, mm, I don't want to risk it. I just want to kind of do it from, you know, scratch. So it's going to take a little bit longer than normal. So, you know, bear with me on that. The quarantine tank itself, um, the way I cycled it really fast was I just used medias from these tanks over here and just tossed it in there. The saltwater tank, I just grabbed a couple of live rocks from the 30 degree 30 gallon and just tossed it in there and it's instantly cycled that way. But I hope you guys enjoyed this week's update. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell button if you guys want to see more updates in the near future here. And until next time guys, peace.